Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we're still in Chapter 2, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uncertainty in measurement. So, a digit that must be estimated is always called uncertain. So, example, if I measure a desk and I say it is one and a half Augustine arms wide, that last part of the measurement, one and a half, is the uncertain part. So, a measurement always has some degree of uncertainty, and it depends on what you're using as your measuring device. So why is there uncertainty? Measurements are performed with instruments. No instrument can read to an infinite number of decimal places. So depending on what kind of instrument, you're going to have different uncertainty in the measurement. So for instance, over here, this is a triple beam balance that you might have used at the junior high, and those are typically uh, good for maybe a tenth and sometimes a hundredth of a gram. The second one here is what you might use at the post office to measure the weight of your um, package that you're sending, um, and it's probably good to like a quarter of a pound. And then this third one is what you might see in a lab, and it's called an analytical balance. And this particular one can measure to the ten hundred thousand, ten thousandths place. So again, different measurement, different amount of uncertainty. So if I'm measuring how many apples, how many pounds of apples I'm buying at the Acme, this is probably good enough, the one in the center. If I'm measuring how many grams of salt I'm going to put into a reaction, this one's probably good. If my doctor is making serums for my allergy shots, I'm kind of hoping he's using this one and he's being very careful and taking the measurement of mass out to the ten thousandths place because if he puts the wrong amount in me, I might get really sick. So there's uncertainty because instruments are not all the same. And that leads to a discussion of precision versus accuracy. So accuracy refers to agreement of a particular value to its true value. So you measure the boiling point to, of water to be 90 degrees C. It's not very accurate because the true value is 100 degrees C, where precision refers to the degree of agreement among several measurements, so the reproducibility. So again, you can have precision. You can have three measurements that are real close together, like I measured the temperature of boiling water three times, and all three times I got 90 degrees C but they're not accurate because the true value is 100 degrees C. So let's look at some examples here. I've got three targets here. These are not measurements per se, but we understand that we're trying to go for the red bullseye in the center. So the first case, the three arrows are not close together, not precise, and not close to the target that we're trying to reach. So neither accurate nor precise. This middle one, they're close together, so precision is good, but they're not accurate, not near the target. And in the third case, they're close together and they are on target, so precise and accurate. So that brings up error. The accepted value is the correct value based on reliable references, so it's the accepted or true value. And the experimental value is the value that you measure, typically in the lab. And so error is going to be your difference between the actual or accepted value and what you measured in the lab. So we'll use a formula for percent error um, to calculate how we did in lab. And percent error is defined as the absolute value of the accepted value minus the experimental value divided by the accepted value times 100. And we'll use this quite a lot this year as we move through our experiments. So that leads us to a discussion of significant figures. So let's define it. Significant figures are all the numbers that are known accurately, or all the digits that can be known accurately, plus a last digit that must be estimated. So they are digits that have meaning. 
So the reason we use these sig figs, and we're going to have rules to use them, the reason we use them is when we report a number in science, we have to have confidence in what that number means. So the number of digits that you report in a measurement gives anyone who looks at it an idea of what kind of instrument was used to make the measurement and how you arrived at it. So let's do the rules. So first off, we'll start with non-zero integers. All non-zero integers count as significant figures or significant digits. They're interchangeable. So this number, 3456, has four sig figs. Now zeros are tricky. There's three kinds of zeros, so we'll start with leading zeros. They do not count as significant figures. So the number 0 0.0486 has only three sig figs. A way to understand this is if I give you a penny, I have given you one cent. One cent is one one-hundredth of a dollar. If I asked you to express one one-hundredth as a decimal, you would have to write 0 0.01. The zero is the placeholder. It's just helping me express that that is one hundredth. So leading zeros, zeros at the left hand side are never significant. How about zeros that are stuck between two other numbers? These are called captive zeros. And captive zeros are never, are always, excuse me, significant. So the number 16.07 that's a zero in the middle there, has four significant figures. And finally, we've got trailing zeros, zeros that are at the end of a number or on the right-hand side. They are only significant if the number contains a decimal point. So the number 9.300, there's a decimal point, has four sig figs. That means this was measured on a device that was capable of measuring to the thousandths place where the number 9300 only has two sig figs because no decimal point is there. It's telling me I'm only confident up to the hundreds place. So again, trailing zeros are only significant if the number contains a decimal point. So continuing on, exact numbers. So let's say I count the number of people in a classroom. That's considered to be an exact number, and it has an infinite number of significant figures. Other numbers like 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. That's an exact number and it's said to have an infinite number of significant figures. So when we're talking about measurements that are um, accepted values like 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters or I say that 12 inches equals 1 foot, that's an exact number, and counting numbers like the number of pencils in a box or the number of people in a room. They're exact numbers and they are said to have an infinite number of significant figures. So I'm going to sign off here for now. This is Ms. Augustine signing off and in the next tutorial we'll talk some more about how we use these sig figs when we're making calculations.